Shalom and blessings to you. It's so good to have an opportunity to share this moment, this moment with you. Uh, actually, I refer to this as Christ, our righteous example, core principles of the kingdom. We understand or we're taught principles of Yahweh's kingdom. We are not taught uh, familiar religious concepts. We are taught the principles of Yahweh's kingdom. I bid you all shalom. Shalom speaks of that, in, that assurance that you have, or should have as a saint, is given to you, that it doesn't matter what you face, it is well. It is always well. It doesn't matter what you're enduring at this moment, it is well. It doesn't matter how tumultuous, how much of a storm. I think we just heard Regina singing on the other side. Uh, the other, or an earlier broadcast, through the storm, he remains Lord. He remains the one who is superior to everything else. He remains the one who is dominant and in authority. I bid you shalom. It doesn't matter what you are facing. It is always well. I already have feedback that the quality of the video is fine. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. If you don't mind, please share the broadcast with someone. They need this information. I do not believe that Yahweh commissions me to sit before the saints to waste your time. But we have to have an apostolic, for those of you who follow me, you must have an apostolic um, exhortation, encouragement, and in some cases, thank you Marcia, I appreciate that, and in some cases, rebuke if possible. Um, regarding all this happening around you, there's so much the, the, there's so much that's happening and so quickly too that some of you don't have a chance to catch yourself. All right, it is well. It is well. If ever the saints should understand Shalom, you have the perfect opportunity to look at what's happening in the uh, in Europe with Ukraine and with Russia. Oh, what a beautiful example. In the midst of that war, that's how it looks. There is still an instruction that there is shalom. Can you handle that? Can you, can you, can you, can you handle the fact that when there is such a battle, and the missiles, the bombs, the, uh, the artillery, are all being used against you. And the noise, the thunderous sound of bombs exploding. And within here, there is shalom. Meaning, you are calm regardless of the war that surrounds you. That's a perfect example of how your life should be as a saint. Somebody said they're not getting to share my broadcast. I don't know what Facebook is doing to me, so... Some people are and some people are not. Now, if you can't share it, that's fine, I understand, but I would just like for you to invite someone to... to, to, to or whatever you have to do. I just... Be, be, I know some people hardly get notifications, so... I seek to have you help me to notify them. That's essentially what it's about. But I guess you'll see it on some other platform or on the rebroadcast. It is no secret. It is no secret that there is a war between Russia and the Ukraine. Shalom and blessings to all of you. There's a war. Guyanese, I want you to know as well that Venezuela has begun, expectedly so, to assemble their troops. Thank you so much. Uh, that's Javon who shares some information to help you. Oh, let me pin that comment so you can help you. Just give me a second. So this is going to help some of you, okay? Thank you. So I've pinned the comment there from Javon Wickham, and uh, our brother, he's going to help you. Um, 
to do so. Brother Brother Brian and Sister Diane, I love you all so much. So good to see you and so happy that you're able to fellowship. You've more, you've more fortunate than most of us. You have a chance to see each other uh, in fellowship whenever we gather. And I thank Yahweh for that. So as we say, there's a war. And, and Guyanese, you may not know, if you follow the news, Venezuela has begun to, they, they, they claim in the, in, the, in the news here, they are assembling troops. So we have our few soldiers who are headed to, I think it's Region 7 or somewhere, Region 1. And um, so in Guyana, there's always a threat of war with Venezuela. But in the Ukraine, there is a war. It has captured global information or attention. It has caught the churches and the saints' attention, which is what I'm speaking here. Now, if it had caught the attention of just the world, as we call, know it, um, I wouldn't have need to speak to saints about this. But because it has captured saints' attention, I have to address you. Because the saints need apostolic direction. The world does not need apostolic direction. The world as you know it can hear apostolic utterances, which is we can evangelize, we can speak to them, we can give them warning, we can give them rebuke, we can give them reproof and all the rest of it. But the world does not need apostolic direction. The world is governed by the Spirit of the anti-Messiah. It's called the spirit of the Antichrist, you say it in the church. The world, the wicked, do not rely on the, the apostles' direction to understand times and seasons and spiritual implications of certain matters. Because scripture records, you remember I told you this program is called Core Principles of the Kingdom. The principles of Yahweh King, the Yahweh's kingdom, are clear. He said that the natural man, meaning a person who does not possess his spirit, is against him. Yahweh further said that that person cannot understand or receive spiritual things. So therefore you should not expect any preacher to seek to give the world spiritual insight into what is natural. That's what we see happening now. And so this war has captured the attention of so many people. And so many people have got concerned and some are afraid. And, and um, those of you in the U.S., you've got great concern because, of course, you know that Putin is just waiting. Putin is waiting for just one move. And so is China from Biden because he's a weak, frail leader. He's not leader at all for me. Uh, so, they, they didn't try the Trump, but Putin knows that the wimps who are Democrats, as they call themselves, are too weak to fight anybody and to really make serious inroads into the minds of these madmen. So, as any leader would, they are strategic. They are led, and they know how to act. However, there, this is another war. Another war. And I know the question I'm asking some of you will make your blood boil in your typical religious Jesus culture. What are you praying for the Ukraine for? Let's have the conversation from Scripture. Now, here's the deal. If you despise truth, which I'll discover in the rebroadcast, or right on this platform, one of, the, one of these crickets may pop up. If you despise truth, it should be revealed in your comments. If you hate truth, you will despise what is even read from Scripture. That's so you know they're really wicked. When the church people would read the Bible and still hate what is read, but they claim to love the God who gave instruction for this to be read. What are you praying for Ukraine for? What is even more disgusting 
Yes, I'm using that term. Disturbing and sickening is when church people who say they believe in the Bible are praying for peace in the world. When and in which scripture were you instructed to pray for global peace? If there is global peace, the anti-Messiah will have no reason to manifest himself, which therefore will make Yahweh a liar. Is that what you want? Okay, let's not say Yahweh. Your Bible God, your King James Version God that you serve. Do you want your God, Jehovah's Witness, Assemblies of God, you Pentecostal, you independent church people who don't have any leader to follow? Do you wish for your God in the Bible to be a liar? If there is peace in the world, then the, the Antichrist who's supposed to show up and bring peace to the world, so if there's no war, and you pray for peace, so there's no world peace, there would not be any, any manifestation of the man of lawlessness. So your Bible then is an absolute lie. I would like to begin by... <laughs> Yes, Emmanuel, I'm aware of that, that Putin has this budget to Venezuela. Let me inform you that Yahweh said that the anti-Messiah shall come, and he's the one who will bring what is considered to be peace for three and a half years. Then you shall see the wickedness, the wrath, and how evil he is. Now, if he's going to bring peace, it means there has to be war. You cannot, I mean, go to Matthew 24 here. His name is never Matthew. He was never a European, blue-eyed, Caucasian person. Or gray eye or green eye, whatever he had. The Europeans had. <laughs> no. If you want to address the fact that there is another war. Also address the fact that there is nothing in scripture called world peace that exists until the man of wickedness shows up, the man of lawlessness, the antichrist, the anti-messiah comes. And when the anti-messiah is revealed, he'll be so nice and so, so wonderful that he could make every nation stop fighting each other. How could you then say that you believe in the Bible, but you are praying for there to be peace whenever there's a war? It means that you do not believe in Scripture. You believe in your religious concepts. You believe in fulfilling a moral obligation. Prophet, it's good to see you, and I'm happy that you're here because this is really going to speak to prophetic gifts and giftings. You see what has happened to you? people in the deceived grouping is that you have been trained not to function by truth but to function by how you feel. Mama Ward, so good to see you. So good to see you. And because you've been trained to function by how you feel, even prophetic utterances are dictated by feelings in the deceived church. So false and wicked prophets will tell you all that there will be a war in, in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they'll tell you to pray for the Ukraine. So, you, you, so the deceived people will listen and say, Oh my God, the prophecy is true. He said there will be a war in the Ukraine, and there's a war in Ukraine. And the prophet said to pray for the peace of Ukraine, so we pray for Ukraine. You didn't realize a very, very critical and potent truth, which is that false prophets also tell the truth. Oh. Okay, so today's not a day to entertain the likes of Neymar Bahadu because he's just an absolute idiot and a moron. So he's blocked. 
Let me give you this potent truth right here. False prophets also tell the truth. In many instances, they do not obey truth. They are not inspired by the spirit of truth, but they do tell the truth. They can be very accurate. The danger is that there is always deception within their truth, somewhere along the line, either before it or after it. As Pastor Mel is showing some of you, and she made a comment that is <laughs> going to give some of you a heart attack. Before all of this war situation arise, arose, you cannot travel, you cannot do, you cannot do. Oh, COVID-19, Omicron is so deadly, all that. How then can all of these restrictions be removed for people to just walk across the border? Talk to me, Irfan Ali. Talk to me, Barajag, Leo, Frank, Anthony, and you morons, you wicked men who lead, who claim to lead nations. You talk to me, you wicked le leaders. You are subjects of the anti-Messiah. You don't know it. You are the subjects of the man of lawlessness. You leaders who call yourself leaders are subjects of the devil himself. How can you say that there's such a deadly virus that's going to destroy people? Oh, you have to get this, you have to get that. You have to show PCR tests, you have to get all these things because if you only cross a border without a, a PCR test or a vaccine ID, oh my God, you cause a catastrophe. But now people can just walk into another country without doing anything. And you all are not evil. And you all are not the axis of evil. You are wicked people. So what were, what, what were you doing to people all along? See now, this right here, that's why I said I'm happy the prophet Eshenir is here. This is how a prophetic voice speaks in a wicked age. They don't have a house and car and, and I see the gods and turn something for you and I see it as a blessing uh, and, 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 and you get all of this stuff and, and, and you're just going to trans shift and you're going to lead. No! In this age, the true prophetic voices will speak to those who are governed by two things, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The prophet will speak to both. And he wouldn't be praising the wicked, as you will see in the text. The true prophets would not be friends of the wicked. So you cannot tell me foolishness, you heedless, wicked creatures, that COVID-19 certainly doesn't exist. People can walk out of Ukraine and walk into any European country. It's not a problem. Hello, even Canada said, oh, our borders are open. They should deal with Trudeau in a manner that the world will never forget. Justin Trudeau, who could not have his own Canadian citizens, be free. He, he, he called them terrorists and seize their bank accounts and all the rest of it because the truckers are blocking certain bridges and he wants money to come into Canada. But now when there's a war in Ukraine, the same man saying even without a vaccine, he didn't mention anything about vaccine. Oh, you're free to come here. You're free to come to, you, to, to, to Canada. Oh, so COVID-19 doesn't exist when there's a war, huh? Let me go back to false prophets with some of y'all. False prophets tell the truth. Good to see you, Stacy. In many instances, they are very truthful people in terms of the prophecy I'm talking about. So they they called accurate. Yeah, yes, they call accurate. But you must ask yourself, whose spirit has given them the information? Who? Who has inspired what they've said? 
Secondly, what is behind what they've said? And I'm saying to you again, deception. So prophets may say there'll be a war in Ukraine, there'll be a war between Russia and the Ukraine. That's an accurate prophecy. But then he would say, now pray. Pray for the Ukraine. Once you hear that, that's a false prophet. Because you cannot have prayers being uttered for people who are not in any way associated with the spirit of truth. More so, just because it's war, you pray for people. So how you can pray for the Ukraine all along? Why is it that when there's catastrophe, the church suddenly figures out you have to pray for those people? So you can pray for the Ukraine before there was a war therein? So let's go to Matthew 24. Thank you for sharing the broadcast if you can. What are you praying for? Why are you praying for the Ukraine? Is my question to, to those of you who have been tempted to do so or have been doing it already, but follow me. And why are you frightened by war? Let's talk about that. As Yeshua, Matityahu 24, the Gospel according to Matityahu, it's an account of Matityahu. His name is not Matthew. Matityahu 24 verse 1. Because as we preachers would run to all day today telling you about Matthew 24, Matthew 24, Matthew 24. But let's see exactly what it said. As Yeshua left the temple and was going away, temple speaks to Israel. So he's the, the environment in which Yeshua is, the environment is Israel, the Middle East. And it was actually all Africa. <laughs> His disciples came to him. Let me show you what they said. And they called his attention. They called his attention to buildings. Which is in temple court now. So listen to carefully what's happening here. The gospel according to Matthew 24 verse 1. As Yeshua left the temple and was going away, his disciples came and called his attention to its buildings. The buildings. But he answered them. You see? You see all these? Yes, I tell you. They will be totally destroyed. Now, my question to you all is how? How? Some of you may not know the answer, but some of you do know the answer. The, the temples of Israel, the temple of Israel, beautiful buildings. The temple court was, was the immaculate number. Look, it was the pride of Israel. Yet the Messiah, who came in the spirit of prophecy, he is the essence of prophecy, said last week. His whole life is prophecy, prophetic. Because scripture says that the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. So Yeshua Messiah said, Do you see these buildings? You see them? They'll all be destroyed. Destroyed. Not a single stone would be left standing. If you present and you can hear me, I'm asking you, how were they going to be destroyed by the prophetic statement Yeshua had made? What was going to happen to them? Because the preachers didn't tell you. They're telling you whenever there's war, go to Matthew, go to Matthew 24. His name is not Matthew, but I'm just saying what they tell you. Go to Matthew 24. It's right there. It's right there. Prophecy being fulfilled. And still they're so deceived that they kind of see the way they're, they're sending people is not what they're saying essentially to people. They do not send you to this account to read the account. They send you to find a statement in here. I'll take a bit more time this afternoon. To break this down for some of y'all who are stuck in deception. <laughs> I like this comment right here. Well, this is good. Patricia Al Shabazz. Good afternoon. How do you decide that some of these people do not know God, Apostle? Sometimes you can be very cold, like a person with no mercy and compassion. I love it. You see, these kind of comments here are extremely important to me because the truth is cold. And when the truth is spoken, you will not think there is compassion present. 
Because compassion, to based on what you've just said, compassion for you is that I must be nice, not truthful. They are wicked. You name one of these political leaders I named today who is godly. Go ahead. Who? Surely, I, I understand what you're saying. We get to that part as well because babies are dying in the Ukraine. So exactly, we get to all of that. Name one. I said that we are surrounded by, this country is led by some of the most wicked people, the world at large, they are subject of the anti-Messiah. If you didn't know that, let me inform you that the Antichrist has to work with global leaders. So if he has to work with them, they have to be his subjects. And those who will not work with him, they'll be killed. Now, as far as I know, I, have no, I know of no world leader, none who call world leaders, who is prepared to stand against the anti-Messiah spirit, even though he's not even here. You don't like the truth. Al Shabazz, whatever your name is. You do not like the truth. What you like to hear is something that is comforting and nice. You don't like truth. And that's what you call people who have itching ears. They like to hear things that are nice to them. They don't like, they don't like, they don't like to hear the truth. You cannot understand the word of God, Patricia Al Shabazz, and talk the foolish issue spoken. There's nothing about what you said that makes sense. How can you understand the word of God and say I speak as if I don't have compassion? They are wicked. But I sound as if I don't have compassion. And who say they don't know God? They don't know God. Because if they know Yahweh, they would not be. Who they are. So... Drift with that foolishness, you tell me you understand the word of God. You understand anything, you understand reading the Bible, you don't understand the word of Yahweh. You could never understand the word of Yahweh instead of what you just said. So let's have the conversation. Because what you have in the midst of war like this, would be emotions. And an emotion that is had is fear. That's one. Sorrow is another emotion that people feel. Like somebody said, I'm, the babies are dying, I'm so sorry for the babies. We'll talk about that. That's, we'll have a serious biblical conversation today. And I'll prove to you how, much, how many of you hate the truth. You just like to hear godly things. You don't, you don't love the truth. You don't. What did I see my son remember? I just told you they show up on the broadcast. Did I not tell you that people show up here? I told you that. Because this, listen to me, what Yahweh has to say today will jar some people so hard that the spirit of Antichrist himself will send people out here and say, okay, go ahead. So let's read. I'm saying to you what the scripture said. Yeshua, and this is it here. So Yeshua would, would seem insensitive because remember that the temple of Israel has very significant importance to the Hebrew people. That's where the presence of God is. Lord of mercy. You get that? That's where they view, remember the Ark of the Covenant and all that's so in their mind. Listen here. This right here, this building and these courts right here, this is the ultimate when it comes to the physical manifestation or representation of Yahweh's presence. Yet, Yeshua is saying to them, all these buildings you see right here, not one that will be left standing. They'll all be destroyed. Doesn't that sound insensitive to you? Because he didn't, he didn't speak with any sorrow when he said it at that moment. So I ask you the question, how were they going to be destroyed? Let me tell you how. By war. There was going to be an invasion by the Europeans and they were going to destroy the temple. That's war. Let me repeat that for you all. The Messiah stood and prophetically said to his disciples, you see these buildings right here, you're bringing me to, to watch the temple buildings? They'll be destroyed. How? By war. Okay. So while you let that marinate for a second, here's the other part. Did he tell them to pray? 
Now watch this. They said, look at the temple buildings. They're beautiful. Yes, they were immaculate, beautiful, flawless. Look at this. Yeshua said to them, in that very moment, they'll all be destroyed. Not one stone will be left from it. Everything will come down. How? By war. Yet you modernized Christians who want to be so compassionate and everything else would say, okay, we should pray for Jerusalem. We should pray for that situation right here. No. No. He didn't tell them to pray in that environment. They will be destroyed. That's what he said. Let me go further then. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, that's verse 3 now, Matthew 24, verse 3, the disciples came privately now. Privately. So he said something publicly, not he came privately. Tell us, they said, when will these things happen? When will the temple buildings be destroyed? And what will be the sign that you're coming? What would be the sign that the age is ending? The Uhlam Azhe. What would be the sign of, of, of the end of the age? Tell us, Yeshua. Yeshua replied, Watch out. Do not let anyone deceive you. Do not let anyone fool you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah. And they will lead many astray. You'll hear, this is where, this is why I said to you, the preachers send you to Matthew, to Matthew 24. Sister Noelle, good to see you there. Not to read Matthew 24 in any version that they send you to. They send you to read lines in the text, not the entire portion of text. They do not, because they don't want you to read the whole thing. They want you to simply find the part that's familiar in Matthew 24. His name is Matityahu. What is it? I'll read it right here. You will hear of noise or wars or rumors of wars and news of wars. You'll hear, you'll hear noise of wars nearby and news of wars far away from you. Listen to this. Yeshua is, Yeshua is telling them that the temple's destruction and other things have to do with, and the end of the age has to do with certain degrees of information and certain occurrences. The preachers send you all to this line, this portion of the text, and not the entirety of the text. But let's talk then. Even with that one sentence he said, listen to me, you will, or section he said, you will hear of wars. And there'll be wars. Oh, okay. So if he tells you that there'll be wars, and you'll hear these things, <laughs> why are you concerned and afraid of them? Because the statement is found right there with the preacher saying, y'all, see to it, be assured or make sure that you do not become afraid. It is in your Bible. See to it that you are not scared when there is a war or you hear of one coming your way. I told you I heard the Venezuelans, Venezuelans are assembling. They will assemble because the plan is to destabilize the whole world. Venezuela supports Russia. Guyana with the stupid self said, oh, we support Ukraine. As if you could defend anybody. And want to issue statements of Putin, you, you need to stop. Oh, so you, Irfanali, could tell Putin he must stop? Well, the Venezuelan soldiers are, are gathering now across the border. What will you do about it? What? Like you forgot what Putin said. Anybody who seeks to even mention any foolishness about him, he said, you regret what you said. Now Putin has a strategic location to leave with you off what you said. Obviously what people don't know, and that's why prophecy has to address you all. Address you, not direct you. Because of who put you all in power. It's called install you. According to the US politician. I didn't say that. The U.S. people said that you were installed. I didn't say it. Because of who 
install because of the uncertainty of the election, you have to now do what they say. So what you have to do is you have to issue statements that you support whoever the USA supports. The plan is to destabilize all across the world. And you got these clowns leading you all in Guyana as if, you, as if they got any sense. Okay, so you told Putin to stop. And Maduro said he supports what Putin is doing. So what are you all going to do? How many fighters just have the US sent here? Putin sent two bombers to Venezuela already. Two bombers. I think they're almost supersonic bombers. Travel almost as fast or faster than the speed of sound. Two. How many bombers have the USA sent here? But Sir Anand got you, Ali, and all y'all. Because of control, you got to do what they say. Because they put you there. Or you have to do what they expect of you. You dare not say that you support Russia. Chao Pao, good to see you, man. Boy, you give me the wrong number. You have to text me and send me the right number, please. I've been calling that number and can't get you or you change your number somehow. But we have to talk. So, Messiah said, plainly to them, you shouldn't be afraid. Saints, you cannot believe in the Bible, as you say, but you're scared when you hear about war. Me? All that I know is happening with Venezuela and Guyana. What is it to be afraid of? What is there for me to be afraid of? For what? You are not supposed to be frightened by anything as a saint. So since they send you to the Bible, let's talk what they said. It is plainly written here. You must see to it. In other words, it's your responsibility to ensure that you are not scared by wars. It's in the same Matthew. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Chao Pao. It's in the same Matthew 24. His name is Matthew. But I'm saying based on what you, you're told, go, go read it. They tell you all. And it's there. Such things, he said, must happen. But the end is not yet come. You hear that? The end isn't here. These things must happen, but the end is not even upon you. <laughs> so hold on. So some of you are in the church, you're scared of what, not, what isn't even the end yet. Listen to me. You have not even encountered the most evil man the world will ever see. Who's the Antichrist? Are <laughs> you scared? No, let's get it straight. You are afraid without even encountering the man who will slaughter you for what you believe in. But you got machine gun in church shooting the devil. You got you, you, you pass the pulling pins out your grenade to throw on the devil. You blowing up hell. And you could name all the, all the assault rifles, the AR-15, and you got, you got this uh, 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 RPG rocket propelled grenades, and you you sitting there dropping an atomic bomb, and you all that you could do, but you're scared of a war. And the end hasn't come yet. These things must happen. Okay, saints... If your Messiah tells you that wars and the news of wars in Israel, he said nearby in the region, geography here, nearby would be the region in the Middle East, okay? And then away from where you are, there'll be wars too. And he said to them, this is not even the end yet. Don't be scared of this. They must happen. If these things according to scripture must happen, my question is, what are you praying for? Why are you sending me messages on my phone that I should pray for Ukraine? 
and pray for Russia to stop. Hello. When one ends, another shall continue. And how do I know that you're deceived? Because in the Middle East, in Yemen, the U.S. is bombing people. Do you all pray for that? Do you pray for Yemenis? Do you? Don't hate me. Answer me first before you hate me. Do you pray for Yemen? Do you pray for the Yemeni people, the Yemenis? No, you don't. So the USA is conducting so many military operations. <laughs> Brother Chubby says start over. You're the right, you're the right point, Brother Terrence. The USA at this moment is bombing people. And you busy praying for Ukraine. Why? Because the media controls your prayer. Not Holy Spirit. Look how you get mad. Look how some of you will really get bitten out. The media is controlling your prayer, not the spirit of truth. Can you imagine what it just said to you? The media is directing your prayer life. <laughs> the USA is bombing people now, and you don't pray. There are military operations going on as we speak and you're not praying because the, because the media is not telling you so your your holy spirit is the media imagine that the media is directing you and you say you feel of holy spirit but only when the news says there's a war you pray and messiah said that these things must happen but you're praying for it to not happen. I'm speaking to those of you who pray, who pray, praying for Ukraine. And you want to feel upset that I'm saying, you pray for what? You're mad because I'm insensitive. Well, let's get to the insensitive part now. Who is insensitive? I'm happy that you asked. You are insensitive to the spirit of truth. Sounds cold, isn't it? Good. You are insensitive to the spirit of truth. That's what you are. You don't even know truth. You know the news. You know, you know the media. That's your spirit. So preachers get up this morning. We have to pray. Saints, let's pray for some of the Christians in the Ukraine. Are you all serious? I'm not the one who's insensitive. You are because you don't even know the spirit truth is saying. The spirit of truth shall lead you into all truth, not to the media. He shall lead you into all truth, not to the media, to the truth. 76 or more percent of Ukrainians bow to the Pope. They pledge allegiance to the Pope. You need to understand why some people are hated by other people. Have you heard the Vatican saying that he's going to deal with Putin? Have you heard from the Vatican, the vicar, as a matter of fact, in the Vatican? Have you heard the Pope saying that he shall deal with Putin? Why not? Because more than 50%, more than 60% of the Ukrainian population look to him. He's their most holy father. What has he said? If Ali talk, if Ali is Muslim, and he tells Putin to stop. What did the Pope say? And if you look at the, I, I heard some of you all this afternoon, I know for sure. Get mad all you want, I don't care. If you look at the true meaning of the word Muslim, Irfan Ali is nothing close to being Muslim. If you look at the meaning of the word Muslim, just by definition he's not Muslim. Muslim what? Examine his behavior and you tell me by definition what Muslim he is.
Thank you, Pastor Reginald. Thank you so much. The scripture is clear. Listen what, to what Yeshua said. These things must happen. Such things must happen. If they must happen, we got to this place because I'm asking you, how can you pray against what must happen? Do you understand how much you are against the truth here? If Yeshua said that these things must happen, what things? The wars must happen. The news of wars must happen. The wars around you must happen. That's what he's saying here. Then the wars far away from you must happen. And you were saying, no, we need peace. Not war. So every individual who has prayed against the war, you are praying against the truth. Every individual who has prayed against the war would have prayed against the truth. Somebody please type that for them. Please. Every individual who has prayed against the war would have prayed against the truth. Now, I'll, I'll only answer this person who just asked me about what Muslim means to see if your intention is to be pure. Because if it isn't, you're barking up the wrong tree here. Muslim is an Arabic word. It's not a religion, Chen Sing Henry. It means one who submits to Allah. And Allah is not a name. Allah is actually the word God. Does Irfan Ali submit to God? Does he? So which God told him to say that anybody who doesn't have a vaccine in the body is more dangerous than the virus itself? Which God told him that? Which God told Ifan Ali to say that there has been never, ever under the PP for 23 plus years, 24 years, 25 years, one case of extrajudicial killing? Which God told him that? Which God? You ask me a question, I'll answer your question. Which God? Muslim means to submit to God. To Allah, Allah is not the name, Allah means the God. So, which God told Ifan Ali to lie? And say that nobody in Ghana has been killed in an extra judicial manner by anybody from the police force. Yet they have paid family members money because, like with Shaka and these people, they said, okay, then the police would have been extreme in their killing. So Irfan Ali has lied. What God does he submit to? Which God? Muslim? He is friends of the wicked, oppressors. He calls them good. So which God? Again, I'm grateful that my sister Prophet Eshenir is here because this is how the prophetic voice sounds. You're not scared of people. And your prophecy is not in the blender of you get a house, you get a car, you get a breakthrough financially. Um, I see that you, could have, you should have been in trouble, but God got you out of trouble. That's the prophecy. If you cannot speak to leaders of this world, you're not a prophet, you're a wimp. If you cannot address, and I talk about afar, if you cannot address the wicked in your own country, you're a wimp, you're not a prophet. You're a chicken and a crook. 
everyone who prayed against the war <clears throat> has prayed against the truth. Every one of you. Because the truth goes even deeper than that. Messiah said these words. He further said, Who is faithful and sensible? Who is the faithful and sensible servant whose master puts in charge of the... Or before that, going on. We are in verse number... Number seven. For people fight each other. Nations, Matityahu 24, seven. Nations will fight each other. Peoples, which will be tribal wars. You racist Guyanese, I encountered one today. Mm -hmm. Peoples, tribes, and others will fight each other. Then there'll be nations. So you'll have tribal warfare, and you'll have national warfare, or international warfare, cross borders. There'll be famines and earthquakes in various parts of the world. All this is the beginning of the birth pains. Ooh. We have many mothers in the broadcast. Fathers, you all answer, because the mothers need, at least I hope you all, you all know, you all can answer this question. A mother on this broadcast, if you're a mother, what follows birth pains? The hint is that the word begins with D. When you have birth pains as a mother, well, father, some of y'all witness it because your wife called you and screamed. Scr 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 oh, Lord, when they read this, hold you by your neck, grab you by the ear, hold your arm, shake you. Ah, you got me here. So the birth pains, you say that's the beginning of the birth pains. Here's my question to you. If you, there you go. If you are a mother, what follows the birth pain? It begins with D. The answers are coming up on the screen already. So your mothers are intact. You're good. You're solid. Good. Delivery. Saints, as my brother Stephen would have said, pay attention. Listen to this carefully because they sent you here to Matthew 24. They sent you here. Well, let's deal with it then. Delivery. Look at this. People will fight people. People are fighting people. Nations, that's tribal war. Nations will fight nations. That's international war, global warfare. Then he said there'll be famines, there'll be earthquakes in various parts of the world. That's happened already and is happening. All this is but the beginning of the birth pains. Birth pains announce that delivery or deliverance will follow. Don't miss this. Birth pains will be followed by delivery or deliverance. You'll be delivered from the pain by something coming out of you. There'll be a birthing of something, a child. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to me, saints. How can you be sent to the Bible, believe in the Bible, as the preacher said, and you didn't get this yet? In the absence of people fighting people, nation fighting nation, famines, earthquakes, pestilences, there is no deliverance for you to get afterwards. So how are you praying against what is necessary for you to be delivered? Are you crazy? And you preachers who tell people to do this, are you out of your mind? You are deceived. Let me bring it to you again. Birth pains announce that delivery is here. It's about to come now. So you have got Wars, rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, pestilences. And Messiah said, once you see this, it is just the beginning of the birth pains. What? You looking at the birth pain. You're not looking at what comes after the birth pain. Because if you do not have wars, if you do not have famine, if you don't have earthquakes, if you don't have nations against nations, if you don't have tribal wars, listen to me. You have no deliverance. None. 
So you then have preachers telling y'all to pray against your own period where deliverance will follow. And that's so crazy the church is. That's what you're fooling with. That's what I told you. Don't, don't, don't play with this broadcast right here. Because I'm not tolerant to any donkeys coming here to play the fool this afternoon. You don't want to miss this. That's why I asked you to share it. Because people have to get it. Once you want to talk about you praying and you fasting and oh my God, the, the end is near, you need to hear this. When you pray against a war, when you pray against a famine, when you pray against an earthquake, when you pray against tribal wars, you are praying against your own deliverance coming to you. That's how crazy you are. Following these stupid preachers. You should be looking up and rejoicing at the fact that your deliverance is near. Stop your foolishness. You should be, according to scripture, looking up and rejoicing to know that your deliverance is near. You are frightened by the birth pains. You're scared of the birth pains. But you're not looking at what the text told you. The beginning of your birth pain is found in the news about the war, about the rumors of the war, about the earthquakes in Haiti, the earthquake in this place, earthquake in this place, earthquake in this place. That's the trouble. And you praying against what announces your deliverance. So if you don't have these things, how you know that your deliverance is at hand? Oh, smart one, just help the church play because some of you are too deep. I just want to make snide, silly remarks. I, I hear him a snide because you want to act as if you're spiritual. So tell me if you're so smart, how can you pray against the sign of your being delivered? So how would you know you'd be delivered then? Delivered from what? The evil age, the evil world in which you found yourself. Isn't it scary to know that people who say they believe in the Bible, that's where 12 we go this afternoon, they believe in the Bible, they acknowledge, yes, I believe the Bible, I believe the Word of God. Okay, good. You believe the Word of God, so why are you praying against it then? Everything is wrong with praying against a war. Everything. So don't tell me there's nothing wrong with praying against the war. Everything is wrong with it. Because I just told you what is wrong. One, you're praying against Yahweh's will. And that's trouble. Two, you're saying he's a liar, that there shouldn't be any war when he said there should be. There has to be. And three, it is asinine and stupid to pray against a sign that you'll be delivered. So can you imagine a pregnant mother carrying a baby for nine months? And she's saying, this not one any sign that'll have this child. I'm going to work. I'm going to do all these different things. And I'll be fine. I don't even know what, need to know when I have a child. And she goes in the middle of the office and the baby just drops onto the floor. That makes sense to you? No. The birth pain to a mother, the pregnant woman, is an announcement to get ready. To find yourself in a position where you are prepared for deliverance. Wow, my son said, Pops, they're probably playing against you. The one who sent to us, they are, son. They try to have a prayer meeting against me right now. Actually, I know of them. And the, 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 well, one, the leader died. The prayer meeting leader died. The pastor who called the prayer meeting is dead. How can you hate evil? Hate the evil age? despise the wickedness in the world and then pray against a sign that you be delivered from all of this. With your wisdom, tell me. Because some of you are all smart. So tell me how, how, how wise that is to you. The announcement is the cramps have started, the contractions have started. Get to a safe place because your child can die and so can you. 
if you are unprepared and have no birth pains. So birth pain here is an announcement to the church. Your deliverance is near. Your deliverance is near. You are seeing wars. You are seeing famine. You're seeing Ukraine and Russia fighting. Good, because your deliverance is near. Deliverance from what? From the evil age. They ask, what will be the sign? What's the sign of the end of this age? What age? The evil age. The sign is there'll be wars. There'll be famine. There'll be earthquakes. There'll be so many things happening because your deliverance will follow. Who <laughs> At that time, at that time, you will be arrested. That's verse 9, Matthew 24, 9. At that time, you will be arrested. You who? The disciples who called to ask Yeshua the question privately. You will be arrested and handed over to be punished and put to death. And all peoples, including church people, will hate you. All nations of people, all sects of people will hate you because of my name's sake or because of me or on account of me. Not because you're Hebrew, not because you're black, not because you're African or you're white. They'll hate you because of Yeshua HaMashiach. Hold on. Tell me now. Where in this frame did you see Yeshua say, pray that the wars don't happen. Pray that the earthquakes do not happen. Pray that the famine doesn't happen. And if there's a country that's at war, pray for that country, please, because you don't want to have children dying. So let's address the part of children dying then. Because we have to give account for sovereignty in this conversation. We have to give room to sovereignty in this conversation. Sovereignty speaks to having ultimate unbridled power. You do not understand sovereignty. Look at this statement. Candy Candy said, of course I believe in the Bible. Look at this. I am not praying against the war. I am praying God protection be with the innocent. With the innocent. Like, listen to the language. We are living in the end time. Look around the world, the signs of the times. Every single day, Bible prophecy being fulfilled. You are praying for protection of the innocent. What classifies one as being innocent? And that's exactly where I'm taking you now in this conversation. Hopefully you go there with me. Candy, candy. You say you're praying for the innocent. To understand the term innocence, candy, candy, that's your handle. You have to understand the term sovereignty. If you do not understand sovereignty, you cannot understand what innocence means. Because someone has to deem you innocent. Innocent of what? You praying for the innocent based on your moral standard, not spiritual position. And I'll tell you why I said it. You, for example, will say that a baby is innocent. A Ukrainian baby is innocent. So the baby shouldn't be bombed and killed because the baby is innocent. Innocent according to what? You will say the child has never done anything wrong. By whose standard? You say children are being killed. Children are being killed in, the, in Ukraine, so let's pray. Because they are innocent children. By whose standard? You do not comprehend sovereignty. You would not type it. You just type it. It's obvious. And I'm not insulting. I'm telling the truth. If you're insulted, well, that's on you. But I'm not insulting. I'm telling the truth. Candy, candy, you and others cannot understand sovereignty and type what you just type. So I'll give you the scripture then. Since that's where you want to go, let's go there.
Here is a question from the Bible for you. Who Thank you so much. Who? Can counsel Yahweh. If you read the Bible, it's in Yeshayahu. His name is Isaiah. So the prophet of Israel is asking Israel a question that you need to answer. Who can counsel Yahweh? Yahweh himself with Eov, his name, the man is not Job, his name is Eov. Nobody named Job has ever had an experience in the Bible. Never. In Israel history. Or well, it wasn't Israel in, in, in that in the um the Earth Chaldeans history. None. So Yahweh is asking a question. Who has ever counseled me? Who? So when you say candy candy and others say that innocent children are dying, I'm asking you the question, by whose standard are they innocent? Psalm sent you one scripture for it. 51 verse 3 speaks of the fact that the wicked are unknown or estranged from the womb. From the belly they go forth speaking lies. They are unknown to Yahweh. Anyone who is wicked is born wicked. And he said, from the belly, from the womb, I don't know them. You say they're innocent. Well, no, you, you stop typing. Let's talk. If you said that they're innocent, I'm asking you, because I told you all today, your test comes from the scripture, you will hate the Bible. You will hate the same King James Version, NIV, any version you have. You will hate what's written because you don't love the truth. I'm going to prove it to you. I'll prove to you how much you hate truth. And obviously you have to hate me afterwards. If you love truth, you'll be delivered and you'll say, okay, then I accept and I will love righteousness. But I don't see that coming from many of you. The scripture records that the wicked, Psalm 58, 53 verse 1 and 58 verse 1, 1 to 2, the wicked are unknown to Yahweh from the womb. From the belly, they go forth speaking lies, not truth. You call them innocent baby. What a baby. Nice baby. Oh my God, that's such an innocent child. Look at the baby dead on the road. That's such an innocent baby that's dead. How could you kill an innocent baby? Innocent by whose standard? Are you God? So now it gets serious right here. All you who make these kinds of statements, you are positioning yourself parallel to sovereignty. And you're saying to Yahweh, uh-uh, no, this shouldn't happen. I told you, Candy Candy, if you don't hit me, then maybe you have some truth inside of you. But based on what you said, innocent, you don't pray for any innocent what? Who's innocent? What made them innocent? By whose standard? You haven't answered me yet. By whose standard are they innocent? Yours? Are you, are you Yahweh? Are you sovereign? How can you decide who's innocent and who's guilty? Are you the judge? Don't you all say judge not? How do you determine innocence and guilt? Based on what? It has to be based on some moral code by which you function. Hence you say a baby is innocent. But Yahweh doesn't function by moral codes. He functions by spiritual identity. Somebody please type that to help someone. Yahweh doesn't function by moral codes. He functions by spiritual identity. You are either known to him or you are not. Meaning that he doesn't have anything to do with you. If you, uh, Yahweh does not function by moral codes. He functions by spiritual identity. If you are known to him, you are his. The Yahweh knows those who are his. That's what is written in Timothy. Is. Paul is asking, what about <laughs> the repent after coming from the belly of the beast? Repent from what? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4, Paul Alton states that the wicked. Yahweh has made everything for himself. Yes, even the wicked people were made for the day of destruction. So how are they repenting from what? How are they repenting when they come if they, if they are born to be destroyed? So then let's go further into the text. Israel was under attack by people who hated them. And in the attack, some of you watch the movies, huh? <laughs> a man named Haman said that 
he will kill every single Hebrew person, which includes children. Haman said, I will, let's kill all them. That was his plan. So Haman crafted a, ma a master plan. Of course, he deceived the king. And got the king to agree that, okay, these Hebrew people deserve to die. And this we all love the Esther story. And Esther was made queen because Vashti was put out of the house. Vashti was, was put out of the king's palace. And Esther became queen. Her uncle, or cousin Mordecai, said to her, listen, who knows? Maybe you're in the kingdom for such a time as this. What kingdom? Not the Persian Empire, that, that area. The kingdom of Yahweh. The region of Yahweh's sovereignty. Maybe come to it for such a time as this. Who knows? He brought you in this environment for this reason. So, Haman, hear me carefully. Haman had the gallows built and he said they're going to hang the Hebrew people. Hang the Hebrews, not Jews. Hang them. Esther was able to go to the king. She was granted access to the king's court. And she told the king what happened. I want you to pay careful attention, please. Those of you who are grieving for the babies who are dying, you need to hear this because I'm talking to you about Yahweh's kingdom. Esther fasted and prayed unto her God who is Yahweh. She prepared herself for this occasion because there was going to be, the, 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 the order was given, every Hebrew person was going to be hung. When the king realized that Haman had deceived him and that Haman was actually the wicked person, I want you to listen to me carefully. Carefully drink some water. Put the pill on your tongue to lower your blood pressure and control your heart rate. Esther was considered the defender of Israel's cause. She's the one who saved Israel. And she fasted and prayed to get this strength to do what she had to do because her life depended on, on, on the situation. Esther won the king's heart. Look at this. The king said, when he discovered the truth that Haman was actually the troublemaker, the king said, to hang Haman and his children. How can you hang innocent children? The children never planned to kill anybody. The children of Haman never did anything to Israel in reference to any account. So how could a king be so cruel to hang innocent children? How is that right? How could it be acceptable for a king to hang innocent children? Well, I'll give you another account. Daniel was again a victim of hatred. And they deceived the king, saying, King, made a, make a decree, make an order that nobody, nobody is to pray to any other god in any other name than yours. And if they do it, they must be put in the den of lions. The king accepted because he didn't know that Daniel was a praying man. He loved Daniel, but he didn't know that, that Daniel was praying. And he made the decree. Daniel opened his windows as normal and prayed to the east, which is Yerushalayim. And they said, King, you made a decree. Your order cannot be broken according to the law of the Medes and the Persians. You cannot change what you said. You said it and that's the end of the matter. We, Daniel is praying. The king had to keep his word. The king brought Daniel in and said, well, Recently, I have to put you in a den, but I know that your God will deliver you. Daniel was thrown in a den of lions. And he should have been eaten according to scriptural accounts. The next morning, Daniel was right there chilling. Because he said an angel came and shut the mouth of the lions. When the king saw that Daniel was free of being devoured, he said, take him out of here. Bring 
the governors who lied to me and deceived me, and their families, including their children, and he threw them in a den of lions. Is that acceptable to you, Christians? Is it okay to throw innocent children into a den of lions to lions eat them? They didn't do anything. They, did. they didn't go and complain to the king. Their father did. Their fathers did, but they died. Okay, I have one more for you before I leave you. Yahweh himself, when he was about to deliver, hear the term? Deliver Israel from Egyptian bondage, said, I'm losing your comments, I'm trying to find them back. Okay. Yahweh, when he was about to deliver Israel from Egyptian bondage, said, Moshi, this is the night. I will kill every firstborn, everything in Egypt. Put the blood on your doorpost and on the lentils of your door. The post and the lentil, the lentil of your door part is over the door. Put on the lentil, put on the post. I will slay every single firstborn from the cattle to people. On that night, God is love. All you God is love people, right? God is love, right? God is love people? Uh huh. He slaughtered babies who were just born. Firstborn meaning the mother never had a child before that. <laughs> you all okay? Firstborn means that the firstborn, the first to be born, means the mother never had a child before that. Can you imagine what it feels like to lose your firstborn, the child who opened your womb, it's called? You know what it feels like to lose the first child you've ever made? And in some cases, it could be somebody who's just made a child. It's her first baby. And that baby was slaughtered. By whom? By whose instruction? Do you still love God? Is God still holy? Is God still love? Well, let me help you with this. I was speaking to Candy. Candy, that's what sovereignty looks like because you didn't think about that when you said what you said. Aren't those children innocent, Candy, Candy? Which Egyptian newborn baby could have enslaved Israel? Who? Can a newborn baby enslave anybody? So Yahweh said he will kill people who were first born. It could be an old person or a young person, anybody, anyone who was born first was dead. You cannot understand sovereignty and tell me about innocence. Because you don't understand what innocence means. Innocence in a biblical, scriptural, spiritual principle means that Yahweh has given you the nature and the spirit of his son. And he has said that you're innocent. No human being can deem another person innocent. You all need to stop your foolishness. Innocent? So what many of you have been praying for is what the media has informed you about. Bless you, Sister Georgia. You do not know truth. And if you know it, you hate it then. The scripture, and I close with this, informs its saints, you must pray. For what? Leaders. So that you can have a quiet and peaceable life. Not so that the leaders can be saved. Pray for those in authority, not the church. Those who govern, 
he was speaking there in the Roman context, the Roman people and those who lived in Rome. Pray that you, the saint, would have a quiet and peaceable life. You, not the leader. The leader submit to the spirit of Hasitan. You don't. So you pray that wherever you find yourself in this world, you must have a quiet and peaceable life. He never said to pray against war. You pray that your life could be at peace. Meaning what? It speaks of their policies and what they do. How do they behave towards you? Language is the problem of the English-speaking church. It continues to be the problem. Because you read Bibles in English, you think in English, and you seek to construct a Hebrew concept in English. And it's a tragedy. It doesn't mean you have to speak Hebrew, but you have to re accept the truth that Yahweh never spoke to English people. So the words were translated for us to be able to read it. But the conversations had culture attached to it. I hope that some of y'all could handle the way to this, this, what I'm saying to you there. Pray that you can, honestly speaking. The conversations of Yahweh with his people had cultural weight attached to it. So they understood every word he was saying to them. We don't. We have to translate and get all kinds of dictionaries and stuff to work. Or we can have the spirit of truth who leads us into all truth and helps you to understand what he said. Innocent. I beg you not to use a word again if, if, if you anything close to being a saint. Oh, that person is innocent. Don't do it. You cannot know sovereignty into an innocence. For Psalm 115 verse 5, the 115th division of Psalm, verse 2. Psalm 115 verse 2 states that Elohim, Yahweh, sits on his throne and he does whatever he pleases. So you could tell him that he cannot touch your innocent child and he cannot kill your innocent husband, nor can he kill your innocent mother or your innocent baby who was just born because after all it is my innocent baby and God cannot do that. I know you all ladies go in church. You tell him what he cannot do because I know the scripture says that Yahweh sits on his throne. Why the word throne is used? Because it speaks of a place or a seat of sovereignty. You cannot have sovereignty without a throne. So Yahweh sits on a throne of sovereignty and he does whatever he pleases. But you could tell him that innocent children are in, uh, are in, the, Uc are in the Ukraine. Tell him then. Thank you, Apostle Harper. Romans 9, 16, 17 and 18. Read it. He said to Pharaoh, I will raise you up to kill you. And then he asked the question, is there unrighteousness with Yahweh? If you say, when Yeshua said there will be war, war includes death. Of all people. And since you're thirsty for more truth, since you said you don't have an issue with the truth, Candy Candy, Yahweh told Israel on numerous occasions, not just one, that was the culture of war for him. When you go to the Amalekites, when you go to the Amorites, when you go to the Moabites, when you go to those people, you kill every single thing, including the suckling babies. For he said the entire nation, and this is where some of you will hate my guts until you go to your grave. The church in which you find yourself, that we keep warning you all about this behavior, when you take your child, your belly, from your belly, into a church of deception, and idolatry with your Christmas tree, foolishness and all that, you are taking your child into an environment of death and judgment. You doing it. 
you are making your child guilty. So you keep thinking, when you take your child to an environment of idolatry and deception, you are positioning your, your child that you love so much in death because wrath is on the house of deception. Keep carrying them. Yahweh told his own people, when you go to these idolatrous nations, you kill the children, you kill the animals, you kill the people who are called parents, you kill every one of them. Slaughter all. That's what he said. Why did he say that? Because aren't they innocent children according to your definition? So why would he kill them? You are not supposed to have anything to do with nations who are despised by Yahweh. Can you take five, ten, min ten more minutes? Because there's something I want to show, share with you. But I'll only do this by, by agreement. Can you handle five to ten more minutes? If you say yes, we'll talk. If you say no, then fine, I'm done. I can't put you have to get some anointing wrap up in a bottle somewhere <laughs> to address you. I'm just asking for indulgence. Yeah? Okay. So I got one yes. Okay. Oh, thank you so much for your yeses. I appreciate that. Okay. Well, but no, no, brother Chubb, you came late, so don't, don't try to stretch this. But the Terrence want to trick you out there about 20 minutes. Ah, Marcio, now I know. I can't do that. <laughs> I appreciate your indulgence. Thank you so much. Matthew 24, verse 9 now. So after he said now, or 11, let's go. Mm, I'll read the text I want to get to because you said 10 minutes or so. I, I work in that time frame. Look at this. He said you'll be arrested and you'll be put to death. You'll be arrested and you'll be put to death for my name's sake. Let's go further. We still in Matthew 24 now. Matthew 24, we're now in verse number 10. Many at that time will be trapped into betraying and hating each other. Okay, let's go deeper. Many false prophets will appear and fool many people. Hmm. And many people's love will grow cold because of the increased distance from Torah, which is the law, teachings. Not generally the law, but the law and the prophets. Verse 13 states this. Reginald said, right, if you're in church, son, you say, take a time. <laughs> if that's the church, folk would say, take a time, preacher. But whoever, he said, verse 13, whoever holds out to the end will be delivered. Remember he spoke about birth pains earlier? And he said, no, if you hold out to the end, you'll be delivered. Look at this carefully here. He said, when you see wars, when you see famine, when you see earthquakes, when you see all this bloodshed, when you see pestilences, it's just the beginning of birth pains. Birth pain for what? For deliverance. How will deliverance come? Whoever holds out to the end. Watch this. You have to escape not just the, 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 the hatred, not just the betrayal. You have to also hold out to the point of where they're killing you and also where you cannot be fooled by false prophets. Some people have courage to stand and say, kill me if you want to. Oh, this will, you ought to make you keep talking, right? So don't be, don't be mad now. They will stand and boldly say, listen, I will die for Jesus. I am prepared to die for Jesus. You've heard it all the time. You see it in movies. People say that. Oh yes, I'm prepared to be killed. I would, I'm a, I would give my life for Jesus. Hmm. 
Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Once you say that, you've already been fooled by a false prophet. Because for you to give your life for a name that Yahweh has never given, or for a, a being that Yahweh has never endorsed as a son, you are dying in deception. So you've escaped the fear of death. You've escaped being betrayed. Or you've been betrayed. Say, pass through that. You've endured that. No problem. You could be betrayed. You don't mind. But you are now at the part by false prophets have fooled you into thinking that the Messiah's name is Jesus when it's not. Into saying that there's no other name under heaven whereby you can be saved but by the name of Jesus, which is not. So you are a martyr for error. You see how candy candy gets, you see how candy candy is getting hurt? Ah, look at that. Look at the wicked right here. I told you others when they're wicked. I pin it to, sh to show you how wicked people behave. Look. You is know all. You know and understand everything, every single thing. You like to tell people about being judgmental and you're judgmental. See that? See? That's how the wicked behaves. I told you all they'll come on my broadcast today. See how the wicked functions? This candy candy creature cannot take the truth. So, the one who was praying for innocent people just now can't take the rebuke from the scripture that is. Because I didn't say it. That's how you have wicked people unless you identify them with ease. So, the spirit of anti-Messiah controls this person's male or female's behavior. So, they attack now the preacher, or what a scripture calls the prophet. Prophets, in this case, means the one who proclaims. So she attacks, or the, I don't know if it's a male or female, attacks. She will attack the speaker. You know all, you think you know everything. That's exactly how the spirit of accusation functions. Because her father is before Yahweh, accusing the brethren day and night. Good to see you, Brother David. So, so we're saying here clearly, Yeshua said, whoever holds out to the end will be delivered. It gets better than that, because there's a part I want to talk to you about here. Verse 14 says, and you hear this on TBN all the time. Listen to what TBN says now. And this good news, oh my God, TBN right here doesn't waste any money for them. This good news of the kingdom will be preached or announced throughout the whole world. As a witness to the Gentiles, the Goyim, it is then that the end will come. That's what I want to talk to you all about, and I'll go. The good news of the kingdom, and they tell you on TBN, you have to give so we can spread the good news, because the Bible said that the end wouldn't come unless you spread, you, 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 you spread the gospel. So the gospel of the kingdom has to be preached to the whole world. And then preachers say, I have to get a jet. Because if I don't get a jet, I can't go preach the gospel to the whole world. So help me to buy a plane so I can travel the world and preach the gospel. Souls have to be saved. There are those in certain parts of the world we cannot get to if we don't have a plane. And you have to support missions. You ever heard that statement? You must support missions. We have to go into the, the riverine areas and into, into the most remote parts and into tribal areas. We have to go into the most remote and dense jungles. We have to find people because the gospel must be preached to the whole world. Or the end wouldn't come. It's found in the same text where they send you. Right here, in Matthew 24, that the ten, as soon as the war starts, they send you all to Matthew 24. Earthquake, go to Matthew 24. Famine, go to Matthew 24. Anything happens, it's major. Go to Matthew 24, that's the prophet's go-to text. So let's go here with them, please. The church is in trouble now. Because first of all, listen to the text carefully. And what it states, Yeshua's words are spoken, it's read in your Bible. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world as a witness to the Gentiles. 
it is then that the end will come. The gospel of the kingdom. Oh my Lord. The gospel of the kingdom. And Colin Barnes asks a question at the perfect time. I don't escape it because I love them. Apostle Anu, was there any salvation before Yahweh, the Yahweh crew was enlightened like the past few centuries or so? And can you name a few preachers of truth before you? An enlightened, an enlightenment team came along or did God put salvation on hold until you came along? Thank you, Colin Barnwell. I like the questions. Very, 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 very arrogant, but I love it. The truth is that you've missed everything I said. As I normally say, you missed the growth of the banana, the planting of the sucker, you missed the growth of the sucker, you missed the watering of the sucker, you missed the fertilization of the sucker, uh, fertilizing of it, you missed the flowering of it, you missed the fertilization or pollination, you missed the whole boat, based on your question. And it's just tragic that you are that intellectually slow in this, in this regard. Maybe other things you can get, but not this spiritual matter here. Because the fact is, that the Messiah had apostles like Kepha, like Hyokanan, like Yaakov, Mar uh, Shaul, Barnaba. They were all preaching the gospel of Yeshua the Messiah. So long before anything, there's no Yahweh crew here, long before the deceptive Europeans arrived, they were deceivers. What the Europeans did is they spread deception to the to, to other parts of the world. They called the Crusades. They killed you if you didn't accept their foolishness. So long before I arrived, there was salvation because salvation was had from the time Yeshua Messiah gave his life. That's how salvation comes. It didn't come from a Yahweh crew, it came from the, from the truth. It's unfortunate that you could be that daft on a Sunday afternoon. So what Yahweh has done is what he promised to do, which is to use people to proclaim the truth to all parts of the world. And I thank you for the question because the question is most timely, most pertinent, and certainly most fitting for this time right here. Because the text said, and the gospel of the kingdom, I just named quite a few for you. You missed that too, Colin? I understand that you're a bit slow in the spiritual matter. You miss Kepha is an apostle. Shoal is an apostle, or was. Yaakov is an apostle. Yochanan is an apostle. Matityahu was called to be an apostle. I named five. Do you know that before the Nicene Council and other places, nobody ever said the word Jesus as truth? And they, they had a meeting to decide, what, what, what would you use? We'd kill him if they only said uh, Yeshua. Do you know that the Spanish and others said that for Hebrew people to survive in Spain, they must change what they're saying or they'd be killed? No, Colin, I don't have time to invest in nonsense. Go do your research. I've helped you long enough. Go find Britannica, find other encyclopedias and find it. I will not devote my time. Remember no timeline here. I give you five or more of those minutes. The, I said your question is timely because of when you asked it. It was so perfect. Perfectly positioned and perfectly timed. The good news about the kingdom would be preached throughout the world. This is where you find the problem because your spirit has identified the issue. The issue is that, hey, there is the gospel being preached. In, in, the, in the jungles of the world, in, 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 in nations across the world, and you celebrate, oh, this country is just opened up so that you can have um, the Bible preached in, in Russia. <laughs> what you other realize is this. What 
are they preaching? Let's go to Acts chapter 4, calling on others. And in whose name is the gospel being preached? You cannot have a kingdom without a king. You cannot have a kingdom without a named ruler. Come to the front of the class, Colin, it may help you. So what you're called, the preaching of the gospel, what you call the preaching of the gospel is not the preaching of the gospel. It's called another gospel. Because anti-Messiah means to be parallel with Messiah Yeshua. So as the truth is going forward, error must also go forward, parallel to the truth. So there's a rush to spread the gospel of Jesus because the gospel of Yeshua was long before Jesus. And Colin just missed the boat again. The new gospel that's a fake gospel is the gospel that has a name that's less than 400 years old. And you missed that as well. So don't ask me stupid questions about if uh, salvation existed before the Yahweh crew came. No, salvation never existed in Jesus' name and it cannot exist in Jesus' name because salvation in Jesus' name only came when the letter J was invented in 1582. Now how shallow are you? And when J was invented in 1582 by the monk, it was Y in his pronunciation. It was not J. Further to that, Further to that, the first King James Version of, 16, of 1558 and 1601 thereabout never had a name, Jesus in it. Never. Even King James 70 translators never called anybody Jesus. <laughs> they called it the I, and the I was synonymous to the Y sound, which is Y. So your Jesus concept is modern. Therefore, the gospel of Yeshua has been there before the gospel of Jesus. Are you okay, Colin? Have I answered your question yet? So what you are doing is confirming what Yeshua said, that false prophets shall arise. So false prophets have to come at the end of the age. And you missed that too. I know how much you missed, but I heard the other people in the broadcast. So the false prophets have to be after the true ones. So therefore, when Yeshua said false prophets will arise, when? At the end of the age, slow calling. But you weren't born before the false prophets would have arisen. So the gospel of truth has to be preached to all parts of the world. What you're having now is the gospel of the kingdom being preached and there's technology to advance it to every part of the world. What this? But it has already been preached for centuries. And then the Europeans said, we don't like this right here because this one here is giving the wrong cultural representation of who we are. So Colin is a victim of the, of the white man culture. I could understand. I could understand what Master did to your forefathers and they haven't, they haven't delivered you yet. So Master came and Master told the likes of Colin for parents, listen to me. Jesus will save you. And that's all you kept hearing. So Master came and Master said to you, you have to get saved by this Caucasian concept called Jesus. Because Massa knew historically that in Africa, but in Chapa Pan, all kind of thing called Israel and whatever it is, in Israel, in Israel, there has been a Messiah who was never Caucasian. And in Israel, the Messiah who was never Caucasian preached the truth. And the Messiah who was never Caucasian never had Caucasian apostles the the messiah had hebrew apostles and the hebrew apostles preached the gospel of the kingdom 
And the slave master said, this can't work right here. We cannot present any, any brown savior to an enslaved people. Because if we tell them that they are descendants of a lineage of kings and priests and royalty, they shall fight. But what they didn't know was that the slaves never lost information, essentially. They may have lost freedom. They did not lose information. So when the slaves used to sing that Jesus, the Negro spiritual songs about Jesus, it was about a boat. It was not about a savior. There was a vessel named Jesus. Because if you know the Negro spiritual, it said, Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home, swing low, and then I look over Jordan. They didn't look over the, 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 the uh, Niagara Falls. They look over Yarden. What did they see? Where is Jordan found? Slow calling. Even in their bondage, they were singing with years, and they, they twisted their language and, and, and forced Jay down their throat. But it still said, I looked and I saw a chariot coming to take me. I'm so happy that you asked the question because I hope I could have freed one, at least one of you all. But you seem to be hopeless. I hope truth can free you at some point. The culture of Yeshua was inappropriate for the Caucasian slave masters. He had the wrong culture. He had the wrong skin tone. He had the wrong appearance. There is no way that we could give them the gospel of truth and keep them as slaves. So we'll give them a white man. And we'll tell them that the white man will free you. This white savior is your deliverer. And we'll convince them to hate their own history as you do. But I don't. The truth is that the gospel of the kingdom, Shaul went to Asia Minor. Shaul went to many parts of the world. When they captured Hebrew people and they enslaved them, they were spreading the gospel. Remember Shaul? Shaul said it, or in Acts chapter 9, thereabout. When they were persecuting the people, the gospel was spreading. Your gospel is spread on television and on, on silver screens. And guys are there telling you to send some money to help us spread the gospel. According to scripture, the gospel is spread through persecution. That's what it said right there. It was spread when they were being persecuted. Not in some formal, nice, decent church environment. As the saints were being persecuted and they scattered to run away from persecution, they carry the gospel with them. Look at the potency of Yahweh's wisdom. When the wicked were chasing them to kill them, they were running with the gospel. They were still sharing it. It was still being delivered. As Messiah said to the disciples, if they're tried to kill in one city he said it's written in the scripture flee meaning to run run to another you preach there so as you run you preach but you new age calling cannot grasp the truth of Yahweh's word because if you could, your question would have never been so stupid continuously. I don't have to present you with any chronological order of anything. Your question is shallow and it's juvenile and most stupid. You cannot even be man enough to say, listen, okay, I get it. No, you can't. Yahweh is gracious and merciful. Since I had to give you that aspect of the text, the gospel of the kingdom must be preached. 
but you cannot have a gospel of any kingdom without a name attached to it. Therefore, the gospel of truth must always come before the gospel of error. For Yeshua came before the Antichrist. You can never have Jesus preached. Before Yeshua. It is impossible. So Yeshua had to always have been preached before Jesus. Because nobody in the world was ever named Jesus until 400 years ago when the white man concocted that name to enslave people. No need to apologize, Melanie, came at the right time. Saints, I praise Yahweh for you all. I am grateful that you're here. I am overjoyed that you're here. I thank you for giving me a few more moments of your time. I certainly appreciate it highly. Thank you so much. And I remind you that you can never have a gospel of any kingdom without a name. Have you never heard? In your history classes where teachers will tell you all that the governors came in whose name did they come? Even in your modern society, when an ambassador is sent with a credential, it carries the name of somebody who sent them. You can never be an ambassador going to, to represent a country in the name of a country of, 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 of the leader and there's no name attached to it. You can never have a gospel of the kingdom without a name. What did my father say? Son, you serve meat, not milk, in the words spoken today. Many will not understand. Yahweh is serving and will use whom or what he has created in accordance with his will. His word is forever settled. Blessings and shalom. Thank you so much, Daddy. And that's all I wanted to see. I am certainly grateful for your continued encouragement. Saints of Yahweh, I love you all. And I love the fact that he's faithful to his word. I told you before that it will happen. They will arrive on the broadcast and they will have to do only that which they can. Because that's exactly how truth functions. Yeshua was always attacked by the blind and the wicked. <laughs> Shalom. I love you all. Jordan just typed the truth. Slave ships were called deliverance and others was called Jesus. Just think about that. <laughs> wow. Hey, do well. Today at 6 o'clock, in, in the next hour, I'll be again on what is called the People's Movement Show. I am not, it is not a religious program. Please. In one hour, because we have a brother from Africa, from Ghana. Listen to me. A Ghanaian will be speaking to us at 6 o'clock, one hour from now. That's 5 o'clock your time in the USA, Eastern, uh, on the East Coast. And this brother from Ghana is speaking to me on the People's Movement show. We're not starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time. We're starting at 6 o'clock. In one hour, I'll be back. Yes, my day is long. I love it. But you, I have to speak to this brother. It's not a religious program. So please, you don't have to be here and, and be bound to anything. You, there, If you want to be here, write on my page on the People's Movement show and he will be giving you the history behind this, this, this oil and gas business and remember the Ghanaian president is, and Jaguar are, was our friends now in reference to he came here and spoke at our, oil, our, our NG conference and oil and gas and stuff well we have a Ghanaian brother who will be with me this evening to speak the truth about all of that and about the imperialists and how they seek to control especially people of color one hour from now, I'll be back. Thank you all for your time. Do well.